Uh, on the phone with us right now is uh, J.W. Wharton, who is a professor at Southern Connecticut State University, as well as the chairman of the New Haven Republicans. Hey, Jonathan, it's John. How are you? Good, good, thank you. Just standing out here in the pouring rain. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so how has uh, how has New Haven? How has uh, the night been for New Haven? You had two uh, Alden, uh, Alderman candidates. Uh, how did that turn out for you guys this evening? I know it was an uphill battle. It, it, it has been, and it proven to be. And uh, the turnout was very low, unfortunately. Uh, in, in some of the awards, and, and certainly for, you know, for even our candidate going for a probate judge, uh, the numbers just did not prove uh, to hold well for her. Uh, Melissa Pomodonis, as well as our two older candidates. Um, we saw many instances turn out being somewhere around 20%. We we're very disappointed by it. Um, but we had a great turnout of people who showed up here at our election night hey, here at City Point. Hey, that, that's always a good thing to have a good party going on. We did uh, have a great party. They're still drinking. <laughs> uh, so let, let's talk a little bit about economic development. What do you think Connecticut has to do to be competitive again? Uh, moving forward post uh, Governor Malloy administration? I think even current, you know, uh, Malloy administration. The emphasis has to be at least on smart growth, where urban development takes place in our existing city centers and planned communities so that people can get around beyond the automobile. Many states like New Jersey, which I've studied a lot of, obviously, among other states, already do that. So there's got to be pathways of working with transit-oriented development. It's a technical term, Todd. That's the best way that Connecticut can progress and continue to keep the younger people to be here as well as those empty nesters who don't want to rely on a car all the time. So you, you, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned uh, New Jersey and that your, uh, your dissertation as well as you have a book on, uh, Cor uh, on Cory Booker who has, uh, whose name has been thrown around for a presidential uh, nomination in 2020. And we also learned this week that Donna Brazil was considering uh, replacing him as the vice presidential nominee in 2016. Uh, given your extensive knowledge of, uh, I guess, then Mayor Booker, now Senator Booker, what's your thoughts on, I guess, the senator? Well, you know, it's interesting. For years, he's been talked about as being a VP candidate, even a presidential candidate, prior. Um, he's very charismatic, very engaging. He was my former councilman and, and mayor when I was in Newark, so I got to know him early on back in 2001 when I was his constituent for several years. Uh, he's very effective at, at ground game and doing retail politics. Few people know how to convey a message and connect with voters better than Cory Booker because he knows how to glad hand, you know, he knows how to backslap and be the glad handler that, that many politicians lack these days. Uh, so he, he's very effective at that. Whether that can carry over to a national election, especially with the Democratic Party, where there's an entire line of people waiting, that's the big question mark. It's going to be a matter of opportunity and timing more so than candidacy. Did, given your, I guess, intimate knowledge of Senator Booker, how, do you think he's changed at all uh, in his personality? Because as we know, people, when they move up in, uh, in rank, uh, generally in politics at least, change their personality and persona a little bit. Uh, has the senator changed any uh, at all since he was a council member? Well, I think that, you know, one thing I, I, I trace in my book and some of my dissertations is that oftentimes he, he comes off as being a, a little detached in that he's very protected and in a bubble often by his own staffers and people who are his big supporters. And, um, you know, I don't know how connected he is right now being a senator with his ground game. That's a big question. You know, as you know already, John, he's very good with uh, Twitter very effective at that, even prior to being in the Senate. Certainly, it's been that way, but I don't know how effective he is in his ground game right now. So it'll be interesting to see when he's trying to run for his re-election. Yes, def definitely. And uh, you speak about social media. You, you ain't, you're, you're not bad yourself at social media, Mister Preppy Prof. Uh, what do you, what do you think about social media and its effects on our society, and more specifically? Uh, how it has either elevated or not elevated the political rhetoric in the country. Oh, I think it's critical. It's a necessity. I mean, even tonight at our, at our viewing at our election night party, we got a lot of the results online as well as the phone call. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't even know what's going on in New Haven. 
Um, and so I think it's a critical element. And, and you're right, I rely an awful lot on it, probably to my chagrin. But without it, I, I wouldn't know how to get the data and the information. So it's one of necessity, especially Twitter. Two more questions for you because I know you're out in the rain right now. Um, <laughs> uh, let, let, let's spend, let's spend yeah, a second. Dominic Rapini, Dominic Rapini just showed up. So. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, people Dom- who showed up here. It's yeah. Just- um, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, 2018, the gubernatorial race. Uh, I know we were speaking a little bit about it here in studio. Uh, we have, uh, God, close to maybe two dozen candidates uh, on both sides of the political aisle explore, exploring or running for the office, uh, specifically on the Republican side. Who who do you think may catch fire for uh, urban urban centers. Do you think Mayor Stewart, uh, she just won her third term, Mayor Bowen, and many others. Uh, what's your thoughts on the 2018 uh, Republican nomination? Well, all the time, as I say, it comes down to name recognition. And so whether it is Stewart would officially enter in, that could be the big question mark, or whether Bowen has the long-lasting ability to continue on, it's going to come down to statewide name recognition, especially in, in the urban centers. And so I think we don't know, considering that we have well over a dozen candidates on the Republican side. And, of course, Democrats know better right now in that, you know, we're seeing the concerns surrounding Mayor Drew and what's going on in Middletown. So nothing right now is 100%. Uh, all right. And the, the last question I have for you is about your new book coming out next year. Got to give a little plug for that. Uh, Democracy in New England, a community a politics reader. I uh, want to give us a little preview about uh, what your upcoming book is about, and uh, hopefully college students will be able to read it going forward. Well, and ideally it's a textbook. It's a reader of sorts where it includes uh, excerpts from various chapters of uh, a number of books, about five books or so, dealing with uh, Providence, New Haven, Boston, uh, among other cities, even Connecticut cities as well. Um, and I also include introductory chapters and, um, and as well as uh, introductory chapters to each piece. So it's a reader source, about 300 pages, so it covers at least the base of what's going on in urban centers in New England, and uh, particularly on education policy, urban development, corruption, those kind of areas that I think are important to discuss in terms of democracy and engagement at the local level. Unfortunately, too many people are centered around what's going on in Washington, when in reality we need to be paying more attention to what's going on in our own hometowns and our state government. So I'm hoping to bring that back if that's possible. We are doing what is at heart. We should be concerned about what's going on in our city halls and our state government. Mm-hmm. Well, I thank you so much for taking the time with us here on Election Connection uh, to talk a little bit about politics, about your book, and uh, about a little bit about everything. So get back inside, stay dry, and uh, talk to you soon, Professor. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Take care. Take care.